Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a video going over a gaming PC for $3,000. Now this is a request I got the other day, and I definitely could not pass it up. However, before we begin, I want to be super clear on one thing. This is massive overkill for most people. If you just want to play Battlefield 3 on a single 1080p monitor, the $1,000 gaming PC will do you just fine. And if you want to go ahead and add some more bells and whistles and get a little bit better frame rates, the $1,500 bill will also do a really great job. However, if you want the absolute best, you want to play on two and maybe even three monitors and have absolutely ridiculous frame rates and everything you throw at it, then this is the build you want to go for. To kick our build off, we're going to be using an Intel Core i7-3930K CPU. Now this thing is an absolute powerhouse. Not only does it have 6 cores, but it also has hyper-threading, which means that Windows will see it as a 12-core CPU. It's clocked at 3.2 GHz, although since it's a K-series part, you can definitely overclock it, and 4.5 GHz is not something unreasonable to get on the CPU. And since it's based on the x79 platform, you get all the great benefits of that platform, including quad-channel memory, as well as tons and tons of PCI bandwidth for all kinds of awesome crossfire and SLI setups. For $590, it's definitely expensive, but it's the heart of our build and it's going to do an absolutely awesome job. To get the best performance out of our CPU, we're going to be going with the Corsair H80 liquid cooler. Now in general, I'm more of a fan of air cooling in most of my builds, however this one's definitely going to be an exception. The H80 is going to do a great job of keeping our CPU cool, especially when overclocking. Of course, when you do overclock, that does produce more heat, and of course all that heat's got to go somewhere. However, the H80 does a great job of dissipating out of your case. Now it is liquid cooled, however you don't really have to worry about having a reservoir or anything like that. It's all self-contained and nice and easy to set up. For about $90, this is a great addition to our build. For our motherboard, we're going to be going with the ASUS P9X79 board. Now this has all the benefits that you would expect with an X79 board, including quad channel memory support. So basically what this means is you can put four different DIMMs of memory inside, and they will all work in conjunction to make your build even faster. On top of that, it has all the kind of modern things that you would expect, including SATA 3 as well as USB 3. It has plenty of power to handle all kinds of overclocking on your CPU, and it's a great deal for about $320. For graphics cards, we're going to be going with a pair of Gigabyte Radeon HD 797 Overclock Edition cards. Now this is going to give you some absolutely awesome performance, and this is what's going to allow you to run pretty much any game you'd want on two and sometimes even three monitors. So the 7970 is the latest and the greatest as far as the AMD single GPU cards, and when you put a pair of them together in Crossfire, expect some absolutely crazy performance. Each card is equipped with 3 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, which is going to be perfect for powering multiple monitors. On top of that, these are of course the overclock edition of these cards, so that means that not only do they have a factory overclock, but you can also push them much farther, as they each have three separate fans on the PCB. Beyond that, they each have two mini display ports, a DVI port, as well as HDMI. If you want to go NVIDIA on this one, you can instead pick up a pair of GTX 680s. However, these are pretty much impossible to track down as is, much less if you want to actually pay anywhere near the normal price. Otherwise, if you just want to go with the 7970s, they're pretty much in stock everywhere, it's going to run you about $1,000 for the pair. For memory, we're going to be using 16GB of Patriot Gamer 2 Series Division 4 Edition. So terrible name aside, this stuff is going to be exactly what we need in our system. So this consists of 4 DIMMs of 4GB apiece, so 4, 8, 12, 16, hopefully you can do the math there. Uh, so the main reason that we want to do this is mostly to take advantage of the quad channel memory on our X79 board, which of course will just kind of speed everything up a little bit. But on top of that, each of these DIMMs are clocked at 1866 MHz, which is going to be perfect for our build. For about $95, another great way to go. For storage, we're going to be using a 128 gigabyte Samsung 830 series drive. So I like these for a couple of reasons. For one, they're fast, so they might not be quite as fast as some of the absolute screamers on the market right now, but in return for that, you get some really, really great reliability, which is definitely not something you can say about all SSDs. So in my opinion, these Samsung drives really do kind of hit that sweet spot. Now I did choose a 128GB drive for this, however there's absolutely nothing stopping you from bumping this up to 256 or even buying a pair of these and putting them in RAID. Otherwise though it will cost you about $130. To go along with the SSD, we're going to be using a 2TB Western Digital Caviar Black Drive. So this is pretty much the standard on the market right now, it's fast, it's reliable, and it's pretty much the way to go as far as a spinning mechanical hard drive is concerned. With 2TB you can have plenty of room for your music, for your photos, media, for games, all that kind of stuff. Although if you did want to and you think that's a little bit overkill, you definitely could step it back down to a 1TB. Otherwise this will run you about $200. To power the build, we're going to be using a Corsair HX 1050W supply. Now of course we got a lot of high-end hardware in this build. Not only do we have a pair of 7970s, but we also have a highly overclockable CPU, hard drives, all kinds of stuff which is going to really just suck all kinds of power. And that's where you're really going to want something like this, which of course has 1050 watts of capacity, which should be plenty to go ahead and power this build, as well as extra hard drives and all that kind of stuff. Now it is of course modular, so you can simply just, you know, 
plug whichever cables you need in. You can make sure that you get all your cable management nice and neat. For about $200, it's a great way to go. For a case, we're going to be using the Corsair Obsidian 650D. Now, this is a very popular case and for good reason. It's an all around great performer. However, before we go into it, I definitely do want to mention that if you want to customize anything as far as the aesthetics of this build go, the case is definitely where you should start. So the 650D, in my opinion, looks great. It's very clean, it's very understated, but it still says, hey look, this is an awesome gaming computer. You've got a side window and all that kind of stuff. However, if you want something with more, you know, over the topness, over the topness is a word, by the way, just just roll with me here. If you want to go with something that's a little bit more, has more flair, whatever you want to say, uh, you can definitely feel free to do that. Just make sure that it has enough room for all your parts, which of course the 650D does. And also that it has enough airflow, which again, the 650D does. So anyway, this one's going to run you about $150. Although of course, if you want to customize and go with a different case, by all means feel free. For an optical drive, we're going to be using a Samsung Blu-ray drive. So this is actually kind of optional, so if you want to have kind of like the ultimate setup and you want to be able to read Blu-rays, then this is a great way to go. However, if you never really deal with Blu-rays, you can definitely step down to a standard DVD drive and save yourself about $50. Uh, that's what actually I have in my system. I don't really ever use Blu-rays. But of course, if you want to go ahead and have that Blu-ray capability, it's definitely a great way to go. On top of that, you can also just shove the DVD or the Blu-ray or the optical drive. You can just get rid of that altogether, and that works fine. But in general, I do at least recommend to pick up a DVD drive so that you can, you know, install Windows and kind of get your programs and other thing on there nice and easy. But anyway, if you want to go with the Blu-ray drive, it's going to run you about seventy-five dollars. Last but not least, we have a copy of Windows 7 Professional. So this is actually kind of the optional part of the build. If you already have a version of Windows or you want to use Windows 8, you can absolutely feel free to skip this. Uh, so I actually really don't like including Windows in my builds. A lot of people usually have Windows already or they're going to use Windows 8 or whatever. But however, I thought it would be kind of weird to do a $3,000 build without including Windows. I thought maybe a couple complaints might be had. So if you guys want to go ahead, if you want to already have a version of Windows, you can feel free to skip this. Or of course, if you want to step down to Windows Home Premium, you'll save about $40. But otherwise, this will run you about $140. So what's the damage? The grand total is going to be $2,989.10. And I will have links to all the parts I mentioned in the description of this video. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And if you're interested in more gaming PC builds like this, be sure to subscribe.